Hello, hello, how's everybody doing out there? Peasant Chat, that's right, Peasant Chat coming at you on a Sunday, 8 p.m. I think it's. I think this is a perfect time. I have energy, I did plenty of things today, got a lot of things done, slept in, felt like I had a full Sunday, shutting it down at about 7 o'clock because now we're entering our rainy season here in Florida. That's right, all the good, cool weather is gone. And it's pretty much capped off by the reunion race that happened yesterday at Bradenton, or ended up today, where that's kind of the last race you're really going to see that matters um, in Florida because it's just going to get hot. Not a lot of people are going to make a lot of races in Florida. They're going to travel. They're going to go to North Carolina, Illinois, fucking Pennsylvania. Canadians are going to probably start to get warm in about three months and have about a full month of racing before they have to shut it down. Today on the Peasant Chat, what I want to talk about is a certain subject matter that I was talking about with a couple of friends um, when we were talking about air density, boost, compression. One thing that I appreciate while working at Lund Racing that I have done is I have gathered a lot of data that in my head makes a lot of logical sense and I'm able to decompile that and make it something that you guys understand. I do really well explaining things to what I say the dumb dumps or the layman. And I was talking to some guys about compression. We were talking about IAT issues. We don't I don't generally love super low compression motors like nine to five or whatever. That's old school way of thinking. And a lot of guys are still holding on to that thought process. That's why I think the Nelson Racing End is nine to five compression coyote that made a thousand wheel on pump gas is the biggest horseshit lie in the history of biggest horseshit lies. Put that motor combo on a car, I guarantee it'll make five hundred and 80 rear wheel horsepower. It will not make 800 to the wheel, which is about a thousand at the crank. But a lot of people eat it up because they think that nine to five compression uh, and boost, it's just magically going to be fine. But they don't take into account how much boost you need. And when you need more quote unquote boost, you actually heat up the air. IATs become an issue and then you become the guy that chases your tail with boost numbers and don't take into account air density. So what I'm going to do today, luckily, one of those friends sent me a video about Gail Banks, what he did. He made a test showing you that a cubic feet of air can actually be heated and the readings change, but the density does not. Meaning you have a ambient temp cubic feet of air sitting there. Then you heat it and it says no boost and the air density is 70 something. And all of a sudden, he heats it up to 180 degrees, boost goes up. Just by heating it, boost goes up. Guess what air density does? Not a goddamn thing. We'll talk about that. Many more things. We'll talk about the Ryan Garcia fight. What a wild, crazy thing. We can talk more E-Ray stuff. Is the E-Ray a better buy than the G? T500. I'm going to revisit my C8 video where I was talking about $100,000 cars and which one will end up being a better buy, a DCT GT500 or a C8 Corvette guarantee that video is going to age well. We'll talk about that and much more, but not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. <laughs> do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. It does suck. P Mass, Big James and P Mass. I think he's gonna get us a new logo. I'm very happy to uh, get an 18 manifold. To get coming over from uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 1320. We're gonna get a ported manifold on there. Get the P Mass coupler. Put it on. Everything will be honky dory. Dean Appforms, Appforms.com. Get your P Mass cold airs, injectors, Whipple kits, Ford Innovation fuel systems, cheap uh, eight wheels, tires. You name it. DNAHapFormance.com Parkfarm Parkfarm.com Got me a rear deck lid For the 13 GT A.K.A. Donnie Also got two set uh, Two uh, wheels Brembo wheels I'm going to widen those To about 19 by 11 And stuff some 315s In the back eventually Two Auto Solutions Rame on Two Auto Solutions He's going to find out real fast That twin turbo gt 500s Don't launch for shit Calumet Transmission Calumet Transmission.com Calumet Transmission Bell, Hey give me my Corvette Let's go Belak, Belak Industries, Caleb Backwards, the best wheels for drug dealers that run Honda Civics and MFP, MFP of Australia, MFP, getting the crank supports, getting the lower intake, getting the phenolic spacers, getting everything going, billet, 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 all day, every day. Leon Phelps, Clint Stroke, B. Levesh, Douche did it, Clip Clop the Horse, Clean 93 GT, Joe Swish, Clip Clop the Horse again, Ken Phillips, Monty 540, Valley 10 Speed, hello, hello, good morning, good morning, Nick Nair, Naldo, I'm Hong So Low, John Jones, One of One, RTR, D, D Rock Fox, Tito Judge, Rudy Bukala, uh, Coyote Kelly, Wesley Stewart, Sean Pinkerton, Bryson Witt, Mini by Man Man, Tay Speaks, Martin, Robo 
Kyle Parker performance twice. Andy Ali, one of one RTR, two Jizzy Fox, Body the Wolf, Elva Galarga, five boy Josh. If it's not chopping like a motherfucker, it ain't worth shit. Says hello, pheasant. Johnny Trans, Matt Twin Eleven GT, House of Lewis, Greggy Elva, Trevor Mod, nine five six. Cuz, do I have puro pinche nine five six a la verga? Cuz, puro pinche nine five six a la verga. Cuz, let me crack open a little drink because my voice is starting to get a little, you know. Yeah, some ASMR for you guys. It's water, but it's grape flavored water because I'm giving into my ethnic roots, grape everything. <laughs> They're not wrong. What up on RTR, South Detroit Entertainment, Bloggy Luxury, Johnny Tran, The Fish, Mike S. Oh shit, I lost everybody. They're all gone. Craig Walls, Billet Noon, and himself. I still want that motor, but I ain't got that kind of money. Do you know what I'm saying? Johnny Trans, Mike. Big, uh, Brian, O3 Cobra, Don Hill, Bryson Witt, Jacob DeLeon, Demarcus, Joey, Bryson Witt, Jacob, I Isaac Richards, Not a Coyote, OEM Speck, JL, Kev, Peter Chow, Not a Coyote, Edward Martinez, Sean Pinkington, Ivan Keruk Otto says service Istanbul Walid. Okay. Well, I don't know what just happened. Maybe it's just some kind of like, I don't know, blood war going on over there with those guys. Uh, Sean, Don Hill, High Rise, Alex Salazar, <laughs> Santana, Ignacio, Demarcus, Native Ship, Mike says the detail work you had done looks great on Donnie, Matt Francis, uh, Brayden, uh, Zay Snipes, Perro, Cody, Revit Racing, Gareth, and all the usual suspects. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. Let's get to Mr. Gail Banks. Gail Banks is a wealth of knowledge. I like him very much. I think he's an excellent source of knowledge. So I'm going to um, highlight a video here where he talks about density. Now we're talking about, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Let me see if I can see the post. Can I see the post? No, I can't see the post. I'm going to... Uh, highlight this and this is a nice little test that he does where he basically has a cubic feet of air on a test bench heats it up and watch the results as they change a welded sealed cubic foot of air there's no air going in there's no air coming out the air density inside this cubic foot is 73.2 pounds per thousand cubic feet the goal is to improve air density when it comes to making power a boost gauge can't read that because it doesn't know a damn thing about heat. All right, we've heated it using this hot plate. Temperature's 188 degrees Fahrenheit and the boost is 3.3. The air density is still 73.2 pounds per thousand. So the boost lied to us. It added boost pressure, sure, but it also added temperature. Enough that even with a boost reading, there's no gain in air density so there would be no gain in horsepower. Therefore, your boost gauge is bogus. So anytime you are at a car meet, you're gonna have this argument with somebody or you're gonna have a discussion with somebody and then you're gonna eventually have to decide, do I just need to walk away from this guy? Because he doesn't understand the correlation between more boost and more heat. They'll always say, well, everyone knows lower compression makes it is for boosted and high compression is na and then i would say what about octane if you have the if you have a hundred octane aka e85 or race gas available i would hope you would want to make 650 horsepower on 10 psi is less stressful on a car than 15 psi at nine and a half to one compression and your iats are 140 150 160. I've been in many situations where I've been talking to somebody and you know they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, you you know for a fact they have no idea how an engine works, how an air pump works, how anything works. So when I get out there, and I remember talk, talking to you guys about getting out there some more and stuff, th the problem is that, not that I know too much, but I know more than the general public. So if I catch myself at a meet or with it, surrounded from people that by people that don't know much. The other day, Friday, I was surrounded with people that were straight smart. Actually, Saturday. And extremely smart people that have run seven second combos and they absolutely understand the correlation and they also understand when to quit, when to tap out. This is it. The next step is Billy Badass dumb shit and what am I going to get for it? Because you and I both know that if you have a fast car, it does not make you money. No, if you're banking on a fast car to make you money, you are severely mistaken. Most guys that have a lot of money don't have a fast car because they're smart. They're not crazy enough to chase that rabbit hole. But when you talk to a person that will always tell you that 
there's no way a car can make 1100 horsepower 12 1300 horsepower on 20 psi i would say of course you of course you can Imagine you have a 500 or high 400 cubic inch LS. Big ports on the head, a cam that processes, passes the air very nicely, specced out perfectly for a certain power adder. The, the overlap is just right. The valve size is just right. The pistons are, you're getting a ton of cylinder fill. You're getting a ton of, um, uh, uh, the combustion chamber is sized just right. And all you need is 20 PSI through that motor on the 85 and a whole bunch of RPM to make 1300 wheel. People would say, impossible. There's no way only 20 PSI can make 1300 wheel. I say, yes, it can. So let's, let, 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 let's equate that to big block Chevy stuff. What do you think a big block Chevy would make on 11 to one compression? Let's say a 500 plus cubic inch big block Chevy, proper size cam. I'm not gonna take the specs cause you know, whatever. And then you shove about 12, 13, 14 pounds of boost in that big of a motor, meaning it has to fill everything so much so that the restriction measures about 12 to 13 pounds of boost. That is a lot of stuff to fill. That's a lot of area to fill. There's a lot of combustion a chamber and uh, you know valve events and air passing through the motor to create a restriction of 13 PSI. You don't think that fucking motor's gonna be making 13, 14, 1500 at 5,000 RPMs? Of course it is. That's why a lot of guys get confused because they have a big block Chevy at nine to five compression, 20 PSI, and it makes 1400 horsepower on pump gas. And they go, well, yeah, look, he made 1400 horsepower on pump gas, Alex. Why can't my 11 to one Coyote that's 302 cubic inches make the exact same horsepower on pump gas than the big block Chevy did? There are people that literally say that. So then I have to um, think, do I want to be around those people? Do I want to be around those people that don't have a general understanding of visualizing what is happening in the combustion chamber in the engine what the air pump is trying to do and 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 how much air it takes to create a restriction on something for example people would say oh my god a viper online they shoved a they shoved a 400 shot in it bro they're crazy and i would go how many liters is the viper how many liters is a V10 Viper, eight liter? So you're telling me you're tripping balls on a 400 shot in a V10 eight liter Viper, but you don't think twice to shove a 250 shot on a 5.8 liter small block Ford? Built, whatever, right? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it, people don't understand the correlation between size the amount of air that motor needs to even have an issue and or for it to complain and they they don't make the correlation between size shot boost cubic inch and flow they just go boost power oh i need to I, i'm only making like the lungs make over 2000 horsepower on 40 psi 40 done 40 psi 2000 horsepower is enough to go 70 or, or, you know, 7 0 pretty easily, and maybe a high six if it's super happy. But the moment you have to start shoving 50 pounds of boost in the sucker, it only goes four tenths quicker, six six. And you go, oh, so from 30 to 40, you can go seven nine to six nine, but from 40 to 50, you go six nine, six six. I don't understand how that works. Shouldn't it have gone 590 with more 10 pound more? Fuck no. Now, people would think that Brett's motor is an exact copy. No, it's different. Different boost, different cams, different operating system, similar long block, but it does have a couple of things different that favor certain conditions. So a lot of people don't really understand it. They, they literally look at those two cars and say they sit the same. They should run the same. By the way, that car proved the other day that Coyote is king everywhere when it comes to even the upper, upper classes of street car racing. So shout out to them. Fast forward racing engines probably had a, one of the better weekends I could think of where Travis Aikens won the street car elite and um, Brett won the extreme 28. So two Coyote cars won big boy classes at the reunion in Bradenton. Congratulations to both of them. 
So that Gail Banks video, I guarantee somebody will watch it and go, I don't understand. How did he create three pounds of boost when it's a sealed box and all they did was heat it up? Do you think more air is free? John Lund Sr. checking in on a Sunday, old-fashioned in hand, ready to talk some shit. Do you think more air does not come with more problems? Like, think about, let's think about it at the extreme. There's a sound barrier, right? Do you think that planes designed a certain way up to Mach 1 didn't have to change in design, tail design, wing design, everything based on the, the more air that the thing is going to experience? Same thing's going to have to happen with more boost. You're going to have to go with air to air to water or meth to mitigate some of the inlet air to air, inlet air, and EGTs. So I really have trouble getting out there and having com conversations with people because up they know what they know and nothing above and beyond that. And when you try to bring people into the fold, in, into the fray, and have them understand what we experience here on this, in my opinion, this is a pretty advanced chat, not the best, but it's a pretty advanced chat. And... I can correlate some of the n numbers that we have to deal with on the coyote front and, and bring them down to small block forward stuff. And it's a percentage. It's a VE percentage. That's all, that's all I look at it as. I look at it as a VE percentage. So if a coyote is 105% efficiency, I think a fox body is 70%. So then I take those numbers and correlate down. And people go, shit, that makes sense. So if you were to put VE in a graph based on efficiency and timing and what can they can get away with, you can literally bring percentages down and it makes fuzzy math. It does not have to be perfect. I am not one of these guys that needs to know the perfect answer down to the third or fourth decimal. No, no thank you. All I need to know is generally am I in the ballpark and I'm satisfied with that. I have no, zero desire to know the nitty gritty bullshit that happens out there. So. Yeah, that's one of those things that Gail Banks does really well. He explains air density. Thank you, Mr. John Lund. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you very much. By the way, drive shaft, converter, rear end. Oh, and transmission. So drive shaft, S197, 6R80 drive shaft, the rear end from the Grey Goose and the TIG Vision anti-roll bar, the Turbo 400 with the cone converter, and a uh, converter uh, for a 6R80. So if you have all three, put them off to the side. We'll negotiate money, we'll be good to go because I'm ready. Uh, this thing is going to have an 18 manifold free flowing exhaust in about a month, and after that, we're putting a converter drive shaft, doing a little bit of NA ship, but it's hot, so it's not really going to matter. And then we're going right to a Roush blower. Um, so we can talk about that. We can talk about the, talk about the reunion. Um, uh, Brett Lasala beating Keith Ray by a very tight margin, very good race. Looks like Keith Ray's car got had a little bit of a wheelie situation, but the matter, you know. It, the, People start bringing excuses. It don't matter. Red car won. Um, it was a tight race, so you can't take any, anything away from either of them. But it just shows that that Coyote is just not skipping a beat. They also, um, I guess, took about the, the the rods that were in the 399 motor, and they signed them and sold them, which I think is kind of funny. And I, I told the Luns they should do that. That's like the quickest, fastest six. I actually said they should do that before. Uh, Brett took apart his 399 deal, but now it's going to look like we copied them. So maybe they won't want to do that. So we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Again, if you're a boxing fan and you're not on X, guys, if you are not on X, aka Twitter, and you saw Ryan Garcia, a guy with CTE, drinky problems, meth and coke, I mean coke and booze, beat the, sh beat the brakes out of one of the pound for pound best on the planet and the trolling that is happening on Twitter, guys, top tier trolling, case in point. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's what Twitter is for. Literally, that's that's the what they're smoking oh, on. Look at, look at. Heiny Pat, nigga. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah, Heiny Pat. <laughs> 
<laughs> this was you after know, the you, fight. You, the you, dude was smoking weed, calling he was smoking on Haney. I mean, bro, it was just crazy, crazy stuff. If you know, <laughs> this is Ryan Garcia throws a jab, and this is the referee. <laughs> So if you're a boxy fan and you saw that, man, you you if you know how to navigate Twitter, some of the best trolling I've ever seen in my life is happening on Twitter right now. Who gave me a hundred bucks? John Lund Sr., my God. What are you doing? Boom, Tony, the truck guy. Don't. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know why he's saying that. I'm not up there. It must be some kind of inside joke at the office. <coughs> Sean Pinkerton, thank you for the money. Not that Mike H says, like choosing the NA Illuminator for Boost and not the SC version. People look at you sideways and when you're explaining why. The most difficult thing I have to convince people in the ticket system is to not lower the compression for boost. And these guys are generally my age or a little older. The shop told them so. Now, is your tuning window bigger? Absolutely. Your tuning window is massive. This is what some people do, which blows my mind. They'll blow up their stock Coyote at 11 to 1 compression or 12 to 1 if it's a Gen 3. That made six. 150 rear wheel horsepower on pump gas. They'll buy a 9 to 1 or 9 to 5 illuminator or built engine. Put the same pulley on and go, hey, it made 580. What's wrong? I go, you're down three or two full points of compression. So what do you think about me adding meth and pulling down? I go, why didn't you fucking buy a high compression deal in the first place and not have to do pulling it down and then mitigate IAT with meth? Now you're back to where you started stock. Have you ever seen it when somebody blows up their motor, they never get back to where they were stock? They never get back to where they were stock. Remember? Oh, I went 890s with my stock motor, badass. Now it's time to turn, wait, now it's time to turn it up because now we got a built motor in the deal and it's not going to be a problem. And then all of a sudden on the same fucking tune on your built motor, you get up on the chip, you release it and all of a sudden, <laughs> injector phasing, plus button on the fuel, no asshole. It's the same tune that went 890, 880 on the Ford OEM bitch-ass motor built on a Wednesday. All of a sudden, now we got to change stuff because it's built motor builder. If the cams are the same, but you just did rods and pistons, what the fuck does anybody got to change any, anywhere in the tune if the math, injectors, and fuel are exactly the same? And the cams. It's a weird thing being a... Um, a tuner, and again, I don't fancy myself a tuner. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, well, the tuning happens after the file is set, in my opinion. The initial base file is built by Junior. Then I have to make it work. Based on experience, I got to go, okay, uh, your shit's fucked, and it's fucking retarded. So uh, You talk like a fag, and, and, the shit's and your retarded, shit's all retarded. And, and I don't know what to do, so, th th here try to, you know, so then you have to kind of do a bunch of investigating to make sure everything works. But once you start kind of like vetting everything you go wait a minute you went 890s on this file on a stock motor why is it not going 890s again on a built motor well the tuner said you got to phase it different did you know that the tuner ported the heads alex i'm sorry did you know that the build reported the heads okay tell me exactly what the fuck i gotta do as a tuner when you ported your heads go what do I have to do to the timing? What do I have to do to the cam phasing? What do I have to do to the valve events? What do I have to do for Watt Lambda? What do I have to do for anything when you ported the heads? Oh, you can get away with more timing. Is that because you hogged it open and now it's just not even processing air? It's just like, <sighs> here's air somewhere. Not a scientific method of porting that creates a nice little swirl at the center where you want it. You just made the whole fucking bigger. And you're like, well, yeah, of course you got to add more time. And when you pour heads, we just opened everything up so you can shove more time in it. Yeah, it makes less torque and less horsepower. Explain that, asshole. They can't. They absolutely cannot. Uh, so Senior is going to step up in turbo size. We're talking about the Grey Goose here. Senior says he's got the 79, 75s back in the box. And I think we're going to go into the 80s somewhere. We're out of turbo. We're way out of the... 
efficiency island. We are like in the top right of the efficiency island. So what's more than likely going to happen, they're going to go somewhere to the 80s. The transmission is chilling. The, the, the trans is not a um, crutch anymore. So you can't say what, whoa, 4 or 6 or 80. That's, we have taken that transmission and debunked any weakness of it. It's surviving longer than turbo 400s. Okay, we just got get, got to get the converter situated. We got to get a whole bunch of stuff situated so everything's cool, and see how far we can take it with the six R eighty. We don't know what's gonna fail yet, but so far, as long as the fluid is making it to where it needs to make it to, everything seems pretty happy. And according to Senior, they're gonna go to an eighty three eighty five GT forty five based. Um, actually, we got log on uh back pressure both sides forty five psi was forty five forty six so one to one back pressure. So again, that's another thing talking about building like the hot side and properly sizing your turbo kit. I know people that have had one to four, like crazy back pressure. We just got to one to one back pressure at 45 to 46 PSI. You know what that means? That means it's a pretty efficient kit. I know people that have had kits that have t twice the um, back pressure than boost is being created in the on the front side. So it's a wildly inefficient kit. Ryan Eckhart Sr. getting together and building the uh, turbo system. I don't want to say turbo kit because it's not a kit. The turbo system on the on the Grey Goose has uh, proven to be uh, pretty great, pretty robust. Um, quick question, says Rocco. Um, I got an RST McLeod steel flywheel not lining up through my sensor ring. Only about three bolts can be threaded. Any tips? It's a 12 GT. Get the right shit. What do you want to do? Your, your flywheel is not matching up and you want us to tell you what to do about it. Listen to listen to your question. Your flywheel is not lining up and you want to know what to do about it. Are you sure you're lining it up? Guy, it's a very specific pattern. Keep twisting that sucker. Eventually, it'll line up. It's not just like one or two tries. You have to keep... It's kind of offset to a weird... Like, it's not a perfect... Match one up and the other ones won't. No, you got to keep twisting, 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 twisting until all of them line up. Don't just sit there and go, only three line up. What's the problem? No, keep twisting that flywheel for a very long time and eventually all of them will line up perfectly. Um, Alex, your sounds and analogies are the best. Hands down. Thank you very much. Um, has John Sr. and Alex interview been scheduled yet? No. Guys, we don't have real, real time. The only time I could interview Sr. would probably be Saturday morning. Monday night, you think I want to sit there for two hours after work and work more? I, I like my days off, especially my nights off. Like Monday, Wednesday, Friday are my nights off. And Saturday, Sunday, I usually do video. I could not do video this week, this weekend, because I did not receive the parts in time to, to get some video done. So I have to go ahead and um, get the 18 manifold installed from Jason Teixeira. I'm going to um, do video on that, but the weather did turn soggy, so... That might not be a great video, but we'll see what we can get out of it. Uh, I got the parts farm um, wheels, but that has nothing, no bearing on on um, uh, on the times. LU47s are in order, so I can get uh, E85 in it. And once it's on E85, it's going to live on E85 until the rest, and it's forever. Uh, I mean, I'll be back on pump gas when it's boosted for the first time, but NA, it's going to stay on E85 until I get a drive shaft, converter, um, and the rear end. Okay, the rear end is going to be like a 355, I think, or 331 or something like that. Uh, no interview scheduled yet. Soon, probably when Alex comes to visit and get the S197 parts. Exactly. That's going to be tough, though, because we're, we need two microphones. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Um, the sad sensors. Exactly. It, if your flywheel is wrong, simply call the company. Exxon Devil Dog says, do you keep twisting it? Do you have to keep twisting it? I was down there myself. Um, either the wrong flywheel or it's clocked wrong. I think it's clocked wrong. Efficiency is when your $10,000 DeWalt, DeWalt bill motor runs only NA. Oh. You know, I'm over that. And I was talking to a whole bunch of guys that have experience. I think it's a rite of passage. John Lund Sr. can attest to this. A week. I'm not going to take a week to build a motor. That better be on a Saturday. A week? You think I'm going to build a motor for a week? <laughs> no. We show up on a Saturday and we hammer it out. Or, you know, shit. Would you imagine doing it two hours? Oh, my God. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> a week. He said a week. <laughs> you bugging <laughs> I got I gotta figure that out he said a week shit 
Where the hell was I? So I was talking to a whole bunch of guys, and Senior will attest to this. It's a rite of passage to get fucked by your motor builder. It happens to everybody. I have never met a racer, and I'm not a racer, that has gotten work done and hasn't had to do that work get redone. Rear ends, cages, fab work, like complete roll cages have had to have gotten sawed off and re-welded because someone was incompetent, lazy, or both. So I think it's a rite of passage. I go, you know what? Tuition. I've learned. I'm now in that fray. I feel the pain. Can I afford it? Sure. Do I want to give somebody $10,000 for pistons? Never, ever again. So someone says, real question. I make $65,000 a year. Girl makes 30. Can I afford Florida? Yeah. You can afford Palm Beach County. Absolutely. Ellen, I'm receiving your engine yet? No, I haven't shipped it. It's power by the hour has just been too busy and I didn't want to bug them with my shit. I'm going to try to deliver it Tuesday or Wednesday because that's the only time I can go. Hey, Alex, I want to buy a built, a, <clears throat> a built Ben Calamer Stage 3D4 with the new gear set work with the 409. I have my uh, 2020 Mustang. Yes, you just have to get a tune for that transmission. It's a little bit different gear ratio. Reverse has to be uh, specced out because sometimes if we put the value file, the software glitches and it makes the reverse gear ratio 0.0 .0. so a lot of people that receive a file that hasn't been fixed they'll put it in reverse and the car will die so when you get a ben calamar built transmission technically you could drive it on the stock tune but the upshift match uh the upshift rev match will not work neither will the downshift rev match but it will drive fine until you get a tune to make all that work seamlessly and the cruise control Happened to me on a Honda build in my 20s. Fuckers live and learn. It's going to be fun. Maybe video the assembly. No, I am not going to video the assembly. John, that's going to be eight hours of video. If we work two hours a day, I have to have two hours of SD card and then do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You and I both know I can't be up there for a full week. You and I both know that. But when the motor gets sent to l and I will have them ship it to your place. And the moment... They confirm it's being shipped. I'll make an appointment, get up there, bring Tony, and we can hang out for a week. But God damn it, I hope it didn't take a week to put that motor together. Um, <clears throat> yep, a ton of my friends have had been there, done that. Like to take my 5.8 Trinity from 9 to 5 to 1 up to 12 to 1. And a lot of people were mad that I did that. And then I made this argument. I said, the 4.5 liter Whipple, think about that. A 4.5 liter Whipple made 1,100 wheel, Four at 30, three zero PSI. A 2650 TVS at 24 PSI made nine something, high not mid nines. So five more pounds of boost from a different blower only netted another hundred or something horse. So it's, and, and then it, and it always had IAT issues. So I said, okay, let me run the TVS. By the way, the TVS has to get fixed. So I got to send it to Kong. No fucking time. I have no time. I'm one person. Um, send it to Kong. He's going to rebuild it, port it. And if it can still pump out 24 PSI ported at 12 to 1 compression, that car should make 1,100 at easily maybe 1,200 with LNM NSR cams. Literally, we're copying Senior's motor, except I have one more point or half a point of compression up. So technically, it should make 11 or 1,200 rear wheel horsepower on a hub dyno. Probably renting houses here. Motherfucker's still high in Palm Beach County area. I'm looking and it's still $600 plus thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. No, you're not going to buy here. You're going to rent here. You're not going to buy. You want to buy here? You got to earn $200,000 a year. And you got to have $100,000 to put down. I, it, it, this is the most expensive county in Florida by far. Unless you count like a certain part of Dade in Miami where all the millionaires live. How many SD cards do you need? I got you to make that happen. No, I'm not going to sit there and video and have 15 batteries. No, no, I ain't doing that shit. John just wants to hang out with Tony, but he won't be hanging out with Tony. He'll be hanging out at the shop. Tony is going to be at the, at, the, at, the, at the house probably, more than likely. 5.2 short. Um, Cheeto says, I got a new uh, 5.2 short block. Now needs sleeve after 1,100 miles. I feel you there. Shit ain't cheap. Tony is awesome. Dogs take after their owner. They bond. Yo, Tony's great people. One thing about Tony, walking Tony in the complex... He doesn't bark. He doesn't lunge. He doesn't do anything. He just looks at people. And he wants to pee and fucking piss and just sniff shit. The dude is just so freaking chill. He's just high energy. So when you get him going, 
it's over. Like, good luck con- calming him down. So I tell people, if you meet Tony, treat him like he's furniture. He does not exist. And once he is calm, then you can pet him. And life is good. So Tony has done really well. I'm really happy how he came out. I, look, I've never had a dog since they were a puppy puppy. And Tony was my first puppy puppy. And I, I love how everything... I, I could not have asked for a more perfect dog for me. Alex needs a clone. I need... Not only do I need a clone, I need people to do their fucking job. Like... 1320Fab did a perfect job. They didn't take more than a, a two months to finish the Fairmont. 10 point, front, mini tub, some, some suspension work. Bitch is done. I sent the check. He should get it Monday. I'm going to talk to the shipper. The shipper's going to go get it. End of the month, I should have that car here. And I'm going to show you everything that was done to that car. Um, I might move to Florida next year. Oh, Nitrous, come on down. Hunter Walker says, I'm 23 right now and I'm trying to get out of my parents by 25. It looks like I'm going to go north central Florida again, though. Ugh. Boy, you're going to fucking deal with the mouse. If you move to northern Florida or central Florida, it's not bad depending on where you go. Lake Nona or Lake Mary or, you know, whatever. But it's all Mickey Mouse shit. It's all Mickey Mouse. Literally. There, there's going to be a cash for gold sign flipper. And he's going to have a Mickey Mouse head on. So it's not going to be a good time. Fuck renting. That's why I just stay up here in Georgia at 2 a with a 5 3 and No, and no one gives a fuck. You ain't doing shit up there. Nobody's moving up there. No industry is going up there. No billionaires are up there. There's no fucking money up there. Go, go ahead and stay in fucking Georgia and make $50,000 a year. And you think you're doing something. I'm not moving nowhere. That's why I'm staying in shit ass Georgia where nothing is happening. You got one liquor store, one pizza shop. The, the school sucks. There's no work. I got no dick. You can't hump. I'm going to stay in Georgia. Georgia's better. Stay the fuck up there. Be unproductive. You ain't even a member. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I love people that go, Fab, fuck Florida. Hey, bro, people move here for a reason. Everything is growing. The construction is ridiculous. I want to be where there's growth. Alejandro Flores wants to be where the money's at. Because if you can't make money if there is no money. So, yeah, go ahead and move up to fucking bumfuck Egypt where there's 50 acres for 200 fucking thousand dollars. Why do you think it's $200,000? Because there's nothing up there. Ain't shit. The only reason, the only way I would move to, okay, the only way I would buy property in Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, is if it's a vacation home. I'm going to go up there and just, I don't know, play around in my three acres in shithole fucking Alabama. Maybe get me a country bumpkin. I hear them are okay. I don't know. Country girl sounds good right about now, to be honest with you. She shuts the fuck up, does what you tell her to do, supports you, rubs your back a little bit. Did that chiquito? <laughs> when you're debt free, Georgia sounds good. This is my favorite side of Alex right there. Why are you yelling at the mic? Because this is my, my, my issue is this. I am 46 years old. I have a very tight window of making money. I'm, uh, okay. Maybe another 10 years where I can make good enough money. And then after that, my dick don't work. Your asshole's constantly open. <laughs> I know a gentleman that's about 60 years old. And he goes, Alex, when you're 60 years old, your asshole's always open. <laughs> I was like, oh, what the fuck? I don't want that. So when you drive around here, right, you see Northrop Grumman. You see construction. You see houses popping up. You see motherfuckers moving in. You see a whole complex just just pops up. You see three new DMVs get built, and they're all perfect, beautiful, big, robust, and efficient. You see the shops are popping. The mall is popping. They're not. Nothing's closing down. Everything is opening up. And then you hear a motherfucker say, I'm not going to move down there. I'm going to stay in my 3 2 f- LMNOP 15 acres for da 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 da. Nothing's happening up there. Nothing's happening up there. So you want to stay somewhere that you can afford but is dying? 
than be somewhere that you got to bust your ass to make it, but there's more opportunity? I get it. You want to be safe. You want to count on a sure thing. You work for the DPW. Oh, there is no lazier motherfucker that works for the county or the town. All I got to do is pick up a couple twigs from the park, take my breaks, get my Dunkin' Donuts coffee in the morning, and I'm home by 3.30. By 20 years, I'll be able to collect from my pension, and I'll go fishing at a $40,000 a year pension. Oh my fucking lord. Shoot me. That sounds like a nightmare. I would rather get that money, spend that money, go racing, fuck around, get there, go to the beach, fuck bitches, da 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 da, and then die of a fucking heart attack at 58 all day. I'd rather live that fucking life. Fuck this. Lots of growth up here in Massachusetts. Too bad it's for the refugees. Alice, I think your dog's a Boston Terrier. That's why I have one also. So mellow. I, I think you're. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> are you are you telling me what my dog might be <laughs> yes he is a boston terrier oh fuck he's gonna be he's gonna be going to many diddy parties malls are closing in georgia i live here alex is correct i used to date a girl wonderful girl i don't like what's going on here there's too much growth what there's too much growth. Do you want to make money or do you not want to make money? Well, I want to live somewhere in the country. There's no money in the country. There's no money in the country. There's country in the country. I want to make money. I'm not farming. Fuck out of here. No, oh, Alex, got to sit through. Florida has the best politics in any state in the country. No bum ass squatter is going to steal your hard earned money. You want to talk about a state that has common sense. It's the last one. Texas is done. Texas is done. Remember I've been telling you guys Texas is going to be blue? Bet me. This election cycle, that bitch is going to be blue. Bet me. It's going to be blue and it becomes a swing state or it'll be purple. Fuck that place. No, thank you. Boston Terriers are the shit. They're good people. Good little puppy. I also like to live dangerously. Too much growth. It's too much. It's too much stuff going on here. Hey, do you want to go grab a bite at 11 p.m.? We can do that. Yeah. Hey, do you want to um, choose between 80 restaurants within a two-mile radius? Yeah. Want to go to a really high-end mall? Yeah, it's right there. You want to go to a day spa? Yeah, there's 80. 80. 80. There is leisure. There is there is just a service industry that is so robust because there's so much fucking money here. You like fishing? Fuck me. Jesus. You want to go fishing? Go fishing offshore here. You'll If you like fishing, you'll, you'll never leave. You'll never leave. Listen up. Listen good, John Lund. Here's your role model. Why? He's living the high life. You're welcome, peasant. Look at, look at John Lund Sr. He's like, I'm 58. I'm buying an airplane. <laughs> right? He ain't with that bullshit. Oh, look, I'm 60. I'm going to build a six and a half second car in the quarter mile with a factory computer and a factory Ford Trans. No, no, no. Let me just chill the fuck out and let's live the rest of our years in a country somewhere in the country with 15 acres to do a whole bunch of nothing in. Fuck all that. He's right. Trust me. I live in Louisiana. I'd move tomorrow if I had my shit together. It's already at least purple. If you want to talk about growth, that's North Texas. It's crazy. Exactly why it's hard to leave California, even with its stupid ass laws. Lots of money and great weather. I understand it. I understand it. I understand uh, California. Why? Because I, I, I know some people in California. It's very nice to live there when you're not in Oakland or LA or Frisco. If you're in the redder areas, it's awesome. It's beautiful. Great weather. Awesome. Want to go off-roading? Beautiful. Want to go dune running? Do that shit too. It's, it's, it's just a beautiful area to live in. I will never say that it is not a beautiful state. But the politics suck if you live in those shitty areas. So stay in Cali. It's all good. You'll never be more valuable connections in South Florida, man. People got money down here. Bro, it's dumb money. Alex, asking again to start a fishing vlog channel. I don't know how to fish, and I don't care about fishing. 
But I I can I have access to fishy mo- fishy motherfuckers all over the place. There's three guys in this complex that own kayaking fishing uh, tours. There's another guy that works for a charter place, and he just like, come on now with me. I'll take you fishing. I know where to catch some bitches. I got that whole right. Come on. I'm like, eh, I'm good. And then I got Jake with his billion dollar boat. A girl called me vanilla pudding earlier. I don't know what to think. She wants that growth retarded. Exactly. Florida is a paradise. Claremont is setting records for fastest growing city in the U.S. Been wanting to move out of Kansas for a while, but the wife likes being so close to family. And getting... Jim, that's why me and my first relationship ended. Girl named Kathy. Wonderful girl. I don't know how the fuck this became a move channel. But we'll talk about it. <clears throat> I was in a relationship with a girl for 10 years from 22 to 32. Her name was Kathy. In Massachusetts. Great. I mean, just a wonderful. The last girl I did, it reminded me a lot of her because she was just traditional in that sense. So I saw that Massachusetts was dying. Massachusetts is just a dying state when it comes to industry. If you're in the pharmaceutical shit, you're good. If you're in the tech sector, you're good. But if you're in the industrial, mechanical, maintenance, it's shit. So I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. So I started looking to move and, and we had visited my brother in Florida a couple of times. And I said, you know, Florida might be a good place to at least start fresh. If I'm going to start fresh, I'm not going to start fresh in, in, in Massachusetts. So she's like, I can't. I got all my family here. And I'm like, so I had to make a decision at 32 years old. Do I stay and slowly die in Massachusetts for a girlfriend or do I pick my ass up? And try to become successful elsewhere. You can you can say I'm successful or not. But I wasn't going to stay somewhere I, I didn't want to be because of a girlfriend. And if she was down for the cause, she would have come with. And she would have had a good life. I live conservatively, says John Lund Sr. Drive fast cars, employ awesome people, buy lots of ammo, and Florida is awesome. Shut the fuck up about the heat. It isn't bad. John Lund dropping bombs about does this work no that does not work dropping bombs florida buy ammo shut the fuck up about the heat get your ass down here stop being a bitch bondo there's nothing wrong with living in an apartment if you have a family a wife and kids you gotta have a house you gotta give them the experience of growing up in a home and that you have more control over how many couples sell their house once the kids are grown Or they buy a house and they downsize, right? A single guy does not need a 3-2 where the yard he has to cut and a garage and an HOA. Fuck that noise. I don't care what anyone says. Um, I love Florida. Been here for a year. Got out of the military. Went right back to work for the military. Once I got down here, I love it. Thank you, American Assassin. Nice to buy says I'm just about to do E with Canada. Uh, Time to move. Dating channel creep in. Exactly. Alex, if you'd only sell your cars and buy a Kenworth, you'd be rolling in dough. Yeah, and fat and have hemorrhoids. You can always fly in and visit family. Don't let proximity to family ruin potential success. I Exactly, Matt. It's one of them. You see, I made the right decision. She's a great girl. Oh, awesome. But sometimes you just got to, you know, do you. And if they're not down for the cause, you got to move on. What town in Mass? Um, Springfield. Springfield, Massachusetts. Indian Orchard, Massachusetts. Right next to the Monsanto, a.k.a. Solutia uh, factory where they make resin for the windows. Right there. Maybe John Lund will hire me to do nitrous tunes. Yeah, good luck with that. We're not touching. Nitrous and coyotes don't go together. That's another thing. On my Patreon page, a weird thing is happening. So, if you're a member of the Patreon page... (laughs) And I would hope that you are well-versed into what my thought process is about certain things. I think a predator blower is a stupid blower swap. Okay? Why not get a Roush 2.3? Alex, but, 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 okay. Do you want it just because it came out of a GT500 and it has a GT500 snake on the top? It's a 2650, asshole. It's a 2.6 liter rotor pack on a pump gas car. It's like it's like saying, oh, Alex, what do you think about this four and a half liter Whipple on my pump gas car? Would it be okay for 650 rural horsepower? I'm like, yeah, but it's severely oversized for what you want to do. And it's going to feel so soft down low because you can't spin the rotors fast enough to matter that 
I think you'd be better off with a 2.3 liter Roush VMP or even an Edelbrock 2300 if you're going to stay on pump gas. So then I give this advice to people and then they fight me. They go, wait a minute. But, 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 but. No, no, no. Listen, listen. I, I am telling you it's a no. If you already made the decision, then don't ask me what I think about it. If you've already made the decision to buy that blower and put it on your car, don't ask me what do you think. It'd be a better question to say, do you tune it? And yes, we would tune it. The throttle body is going to be the, the weirdo. Because if you put a 87-millimeter uh, uh, throttle body on it, it you got to find a throttle body that fits it for the right generation. So Gen 1 throttle body, Gen 1 car, Gen 2 throttle body, Gen 2 car, Gen 3 throttle body. I, it won't work on Gen 3. My dad moved out of the country to build himself a big shop, two and two, two bed, two bath, basic house. Garage built, that's how you do it. Yep. As soon as our last one is gone, we are downsizing. What the hell do I need a huge house for when it's just the two of us? And you hope it's just two of you because usually when the kids are gone, AJ, I'm sorry, Juby, the women start looking for that brownish, blackish penis. Ask me how I know. Alex, what do you think Ford sticks with the 10R80 even though it's nowhere near as reliable as the 6R80? Fuel economy? Yes. Fuel economy. How many of you wonder why didn't it just stick a 6R80 in it well it might skew the mandated fuel economy standards for passenger vehicles everything that Ford does is not because Ford thinks it's better and holds more power that's just crazy talk they would have stuck with the 6R80 forever if there was no mandate for anything they would have stuck with what works the 6R80 is the god tier overdrive transmission of all history name another overdrive transmission that can do what the gray gooses does yes it's all billet shit inside but it is 6r80 design no different than a t56 when you remove two gears it's still a t56 you don't call it a t4 dickhead so anyway ford does everything based on the mandates of the government Show me what transmission they use in their Cobra Jet. Turbo 400. <laughs> it's so stupid. Shit, I love Michigan and I make $135,000 a year, but there's no money here and shit is going to go and ain't shit going on but the cold. Can you buy a 2300 for a Gen 3? No. Not at all. My car would be faster if I got, if I, if, if, but I got five kids. Brownish, blackish. It's true. Uh, look. I'm not actively dating right now. I, I'm I'm just concentrating on money. Dating is just such a shit shit show. I don't even try. It's so stupid. So car shit. I got three badass projects going on. I think I got the Fairmont. That's gonna be a seven second stock long block car. I got the uh, 13 GT, which I'm a, a highly motivated for, and I got the GT 500. Oh, I still got the ZR1. I totally forgot about that. Ben, let's go. The fuck. Uh, Sancho Plumbing Services, exactly. They all want the, uh, you know, the, the side beach. So, um, typically when women tend to have nothing to take care of, they want to take care of themselves. Do you know what I am saying? Uh, 10 or 80 kills the uh, 6R. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, A-Wheeler. Not even close. Not even close. Give me a 1,500 horsepower car. 10 or 80 or 6 or 80. Go. Oh, no, no, no. I mean NA with a P51 intake and pump gas. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Hispanics tend to leave each other more when the kids are gone for some reason. You're not wrong. That's why having a kid is stupid if you want. If you think the girl you had a kid with is going to be your wife forever, oh, that the percentages of that happening are like 10%. Once the kids are gone, people start going, why the fuck are we even? I don't even like you anymore. You're weird. Idaho is also growing like crazy. So much work. It's incredible. I'm late. Howdy, chat. Uh, you see the guy with the all-wheel drive S550 about to boost it with a VMP? Dropped the video earlier. No. The reason I'm not looking at that guy's stuff is I want to see, I want to see like results before I shout it out. You know what I mean? The same reason I talked about the E-Ray. I showed you. Did I show you guys videos about the E-Ray or no? Did I, Guys, did I show you videos about a 9.4 second E-Ray? This guy named Roshan GTO or something. He has a natively 
natively tuned, uh, meaning no modules, E-Ray going 9.5 or 9.4, twin turbo. Again, twin turbo E-Ray. I talked about this when the in the video C8 versus GT500, and I talked about the E-Ray Corvette being fucking bad ass. And maybe you guys don't think so. I'm not talking about setting records on fire. I'm saying a brand new car, brand new right now, is able to be tuned right fucking now, natively, twin turbo, all wheel drive, hybrid. Do, you, do I need to fucking repeat that? There is a vehicle that has a V8 in it that's rear engine or mid engine, DCT, twin turbo, hybrid natively being tuned without modules running in the fucking nines guys please tell me again why i shout out motherfuckers like this and y'all are not even aware of it so this guy built an e-ray and it went in the nines uh let me see it went nine four or something oh i love it all-wheel drive e -ray. oh jesus christ i hate that Can you just hurry up with the fucking editing? Jesus Christ, these guys with their fucking trap music. It's so fucking stupid. Get to it. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Oh my God, these videos start at the worst time. Dude, an E-Ray, an E-Ray. God, they spun like a motherfucker. Anyway, he gets his time slip. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Talk, 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 talk. There we go. Let's, let's get an in-car view of that pass. This is not an E-Ray. This is a regular C8, obviously, because of the wing. Um... But I want to see the E-Ray. I don't care about that shit at all. I just care about the E-Ray. Like, I only care about the E-Ray. I don't care about anything else. Next pass, we have really good data. No changes to make. I'm happy with it. We're not aggressive. Um, Is that an E-Ray? Uh, no, the fact that it has a wing, I don't think that's an E-Ray. But I'm not 100%. This is the E-Ray, I think. Yeah, that's the E-Ray. And I love how it sounds inside. You can hear that fucking uh, uh, that motor making noise. That broke up there, so they went back, got some data, then went out again. Who the fuck edited this video? Dude, all-wheel drive, hybrid, twin turbo, natively, natively, no modules. The computer that it came with. What, it run 9.4, 9.5, 9.6? Thank you so much. Have a good night. Uh, Thank you. Oh, fudge. <laughs> 974, 153. Wow. One fi guys, 150. Now, let's talk about it. What has more upside? What has more upside? Let's say a GT500 is $100,000. Let's say an E-Ray is $100,000. One of them is hybrid all-wheel drive. Which one do you want? The twin turbo? And let's say, let's say the full package. Let's say you buy a $100,000 E-Ray and it runs 10.7 factory. Then you take it to Roshan or his people, ETS turbo kit. They natively do it. And then it runs 9.795-ish on pump gas. And you can do that bitch on the street. On the street. ba 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 boo Hot. Factory launch control, factory traction settings, factory everything. No modules, no standalones, no nothing. Buh, 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 buh. Eight pounds of boost on the street. You don't think that's a nine-second car on the street? Please. 
please. Triple Diesel, Dan, can't you just fucking grow up? Could you just fucking grow up and understand what this is? This is an American V8 all-wheel drive twin twin turbo hybrid vehicle, dumbass. A gutted, fucked up piece of shit versus a fully loaded E-Ray. Oh my God, please shut the fuck up. Go go roll coal in, in, in your garage. Go in your garage right now and, ro- and shut the doors and roll coal in your fucking garage. Oh my fucking Lord, the people that come on this chat and say dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a great... Okay. If How much is a 8-second GT500? Lifestyle 2.0. How much is it to build an eight-second GT500? Go. $100,000 right off the rip, right? Car. Then you buy a blower. Then you buy a fuel system. Then because it's Shelby, they can charge you double for it because it says Shelby. Stupid. Then you buy headers. Then you buy certain wheels because it needs to be a certain outer diameter. Then you go out there and run a 940, 930. And you're at 22 pounds of boost. And this thing does it at 9 pounds of boost. And let's say you go, okay, it went 930. Awesome. Then you drive it home. And then a twin turbo E-Ray right next to you with an ETS twin turbo kit. All the factory nanny still installed. Hybrid motor. And he says, you want to go from a dig at the light? Who you got? Who you got? I don't got the GT500. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. The only problem about the E-Ray is the weight, but horsepower can help that. Everybody out there getting gapped by a hybrid. E-Ray will beat a lot of asses. Milk, crate, tin can, everything rattling. 60 foot was garbage, 177 in the 14s. That's a 9-0. Bet it does nearly the exact time on the street too. Those cars work extremely well with a tire. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I was only advocating for a twin turbo, EcoBoost, all-wheel drive Mustang hybrid. Who said EcoBoost, Twin Turbo, Mustang, Hybrid, all-wheel drive fucking four years ago? Chevy did it. Go ahead and tell me I'm crazy. And watch that car if they do it right. Be pretty serious. The price tag is going to be the issue. There's a reason Taquaches buy a fucking F-150 they throw a Whipple on it, and they go, Puro pinche 956 a la verga, cuz, and this is the best thing since sliced bread. Puro pinche 956 a la verga, cuz. But if I can swing it, give me that fucking CAE ray. Alice, great conversation. I need to head out. Hey, brother. Talk to you later, Don Hill. Thanks for uh, hanging in there, and thanks for the money. More importantly, thanks for the money. Mike H. I mean, if the argument is a money one, get a used plaid for $70,000 and run it as is. You're right, Mike H. See, exactly. And now they have a Lucid Sapphire for 200 bucks. Me, me, I said it. <laughs> I'm taking the Predator in the GT500. American Assassin, leave this channel. You're stupid. I'm taking the Predator in the GT500. Sorry, bro. But Brett LaSalle proved the predator is stomping everything 626 at 226 ain't no joke on the radio you are stupid you're a moron that's why i don't go outside because there are dumbasses like you that think that motor is a predator it's got a Wimberg crank it's got aluminum rods it's got it's got less it's got less displacement it's 30 it, it's not a 5.2, it's a 5.0 because it's thicker sleeve. It's got GT350 heads, dumbass. It's got Motec and a Plasma Man. You think that's just an off, off-the-shelf off Predator they threw in there and it went 626? Stupid. This is why I don't go outside because the dumbass is like American Assassin. I stay my ass inside because there are people that literally said, Bro, LaSalle proved that the Predator is butter. Meanwhile, an E-Ray stuck. Well, donkey stomp a modded GT500 on the street. There's some stupid ass motherfuckers out there. I stay inside. Now you see why I stay inside? Imagine I have to talk to this fucking mouth breather taking up my air. It's my air. That air is more valuable to me than you. 
and you are daring to suck my air in and use it for your fucking the fuck out of here. I knew the second assassin said that you would give him a fuck, call him a fucking moron. A moron. Well, the Brett LaSalle proved this at Moff and Ross Wooks. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Bro, I don't go outside. I stay my ass inside. I don't need to hear people like American Assassin that has a, a IROC Z 50 tune port injection. And he's like, I got an experimental 305 in here, higher compression. They were vetting this combo before they shoved the 350 in there. Mike Grummel. Mike Grummel. I worked at a candle company for a little while when I was between the ages of 18 and 22. And this kid named Mike Grummel, Army Grunt, dumbass, literally said his IROC Z or his Z28. I don't even think it was a Z28. I think it was a, he just put stickers on it. Said it had an experimental 305 in it <laughs> that made the same power as the 350 did. American Assassin probably drives that car brett lasalle proved everything man you predator 626 ain't no joke on a drag rattle oh staying inside i'm staying inside forever give these people air only other part of the block that is left on the predator is the sleeve even the sleeves have been replaced right it's just a block at this point it's just the, the only thing left predator is the bare block <laughs> everything else is like coyote ish <laughs> 305 come alive them larry hoovers this dude thinks that brett is writing a predator right from jim farley's attic with some dust on it you know jim farley what do you think about brett what do you think about brett lasala's uh run with your your bone stock motor in his car i want to get back into making street race cars especially ones you can't tune for shit 12 second stick shift mustangs are fast enough <laughs> since the drift stick is a hit We'll include it in everything we sell. F-350s, F-150s, everything. Fuck it. E-L. We all know where the last V8 left. We were never the fastest. <laughs> and Dodge pushed our shit in all the way out of our mouth, which we actually likes because we're gay. I am building a spaceship so I can launch Ford vehicles where they are most useful. To Uranus. <laughs> Here at Ford, we're innovators. First, we make slow NAA Mustangs. Then we got rid of the shifter in the GT500. We are happy to announce your driver's seat will have a dildo with sensors so that when you squeeze your asshole, it will cause the car to upshift and the feedback from the shitster will make you. Man, I could go for a stiff glass of anal sex right now. Take my ass, Elon Musk. I'd like to introduce everyone oh. to my new head of product and design. <laughs> and since I'm number one, he's my number two. Everyone help me give a warm introduction to Turvey. Exactly. So, <laughs> Brett LaSalle proved that the Predator. You know, there's some cuck-ass fanboys sitting back looking at their Gen 1 Mustang. Their green Gen 1 Mustang in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in their garage. And after seeing Brett win the other day, they go, they go to their garage and they go, I bet you I could do that with you if I had his kind of money. Yeah, you see, you see my car? It's the same as Brad Lasalas, except way slower. Oh, your car is green like Brad Lasalas? Yep, I could do that if I want, but uh, I got a wife and kids, and I live in Georgia. Fuck me. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm all out of gum. Where's my chewing gum? <laughs> well, time to take credit for vehicles I never had anything to do with. Where's my chewing gum? Exactly. The best vehicle I ever owned was an automatic 65 twin supercharged ah! Cobra. I could stroke your dick while going 200 miles per hour. No problem. Look, them Dodge years were rough. It's either Bill Dodge GLH on me's or sell my booty hole for 20 bucks a pop. Oh, wow. Man, Tough choice. Every time I see my signature on shit like suitcases and cereal boxes and chili, it makes me think, why didn't I marry my college boy? College boyfriend. It's boyfriend. College boyfriend. College boyfriend. I don't know why it doesn't finish that. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in. Why didn't anyone let me know? God <laughs> fucking damn it.
The only Shelby truck I had anything to do with was the Dodge Shelby Durango in Dakota. Those are more Shelby than any F-150 piece of sh it's, Look, I agree. Uh, Shelby is all about it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all bullshit. Brett LaSalle proved, the, we proved that there ain't no joke. Man, coyotes ain't no joke. Do you imagine going to a car meet at Wolfie's or Sheets or Wawa and some guy is sitting there saying shit like that? And you gotta and you gotta be like, why the why are you in why are you in this parking lot? What'd you drive here? <laughs> I just went in for a sandwich and I saw these cars out here reminding me of Brat LaSalle's run over at the Bird Bird Shit National. <laughs> you mean snowbirds? Yeah, same thing. Fuck me. <laughs> you don't wanna go that fast, dude. Do you know how expensive and how much of a program it is to run bottom sixes? You, High sevens. Guys, this is what you should this is what you should aim for max. Seven nine seven seven. Leave it alone. You could drive it back home, generally if you build it right. You could street drive it a little bit to the meet and back. It's reliable. You can have fun. And the only way someone's gonna beat you is if they have a hundred thousand more dollars in their car. That's gonna be the Fairmont. 7, 7, 7, 90 car, and just fucking drive it. Fuck all that. Stupid. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I'm all out of gum. This is some funny shit. 8385 is John Lund. Hey, hit live on your shit. For the record, Brett's life started as a Boss 302. Joel's red car, that green, is a wrap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm stay inside. I'm going to stay inside. Is it just me, or does AI Shelby sound like the big queef? I think I have Big Queef. I think I have Big Queef somewhere, but I got to go way back. Like, way back. Like, the best voice by far that was cloned was J.J. DeBoss's voice. It was just... Whenever I jerk off, I think of that one time uh, Big Chief bent over to adjust his wheelie bar, and I saw a little bit of his ass crack. Man, if that bull ever let me ride his junk, he'd never know. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, looky here. These be them rules for the race. Number one, <laughs> jump... And I eat your ass. Number two, the chase is anal sex. And three, if you jump, we come in your booty hole. Who's in? Who's in? Am I the only one that gets a hard on when Dominator races? I mean, those blue eyes are to die for. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll race you. How about this bet? If I win, I suck your dick. If I lose, I suck your dick twice. What a what a crazy way of, of wagering for racing. Man, I'll race you. How about this bet? If I win, I suck your dick. If I lose, I suck your dick twice. That's how you know he's a real street racer. You know what I'm saying? I know Ryan has all that fancy shit, <laughs> but I know I can beat him on the street. Because I'm, I'm more street up. <laughs> Now, here in the South, we do it a bit different than you, Yankees. Here, buy-in is showing me your dick. And depending on the size, girth, and veins determines the run order. Winner gets my ass. <laughs> ah, what a fucking race. I don't want anything to do with that race. Now, here in the South, we do it a bit different than you, Yankees. Here, buy-in is showing me your dick. And depending on the size, girth, and veins determines the run order. Winner gets my ass. <laughs> Are you man enough to run me, line up, pussy? I bet you won't race me without clothes on. <laughs> One time Sean farted on a chair and I ran over and sniffed it because I'm more streeter than him. I love it. I love it. He, for whatever reason, has a perfect clonable voice and uh, you got to love it. Uh, AJ Joe Pesci voice. Uh, JJ Soundboard has been missed for so long. Winner gets my ass. Those are the people that cheer when a Mustang wins the Daytona 500. Hey, did you see the DeWalt car won the Daytona 500? That's why my garage is full of DeWalt tools. I had a guy do that. I had a guy at my uh, work. His name was Rui. And he goes, Alex, we, okay, we had to go get bolts somewhere. There was a Lowe's nearby. Jimmy Johnson at the time Ran the Lowe's car. And it would just win all the fucking time. He won like five or six championships or some shit. Tony Stewart drove the Home Depot car. This guy was a Home Depot guy. He was a Tony Stewart guy. So he goes, Alex, so is there a Home Depot around here? I go, no, there's a Lowe's nearby. He goes, I'm not going to go to fucking Lowe's. I go, why? He goes, because Tony Stewart drives a Home Depot car. With a straight face. He said it to me like, duh. <laughs> like he's like, Tony Stewart drives a Home Depot car. I was like, you're fucking kidding, right? 
<laughs> it's like, it's right there. You want me to go another mile down the road to find a Home Depot? Because I'm not going to step into a Lowe's. I'm, I'm never stepping into a Lowe's. I, Home Depot or nothing. Nine second supercharged stick cart for a daily driver and take the seven second street cart to a meet. Uh, da, 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 da. Perfect life balance. I agree. That's why I think the GT500 is going to be perfect. I just spit my dinner laugh so hard. Winner gets my ass. Ass. He says ass very prolonged. And I wonder why he says... Winner gets my ass. It's the North versus South racing clip. Let me let me see. Now here, let me see if I can isolate it. Ass. <laughs> Wait. Winner gets my ass. Means the run order. Winner gets my ass. Order. Winner gets my ass. Winner gets my. <laughs> I would just let off. <laughs> oh, I'm ahead. Let me just pull the parachute. Fuck this. I'm not winning this. Then I'm gonna have to get his ass. How haven't you gotten a cease and desist is beyond me because it's comedy. Oh, my God. Stop it. They probably love it. Uh, dude, who wrote the script on these AI? Who do you think? Who do you think writes all this gay stuff? You should hear the shit that I haven't aired. Oof. Oh. If anyone. <laughs> Ooh, it's, it's great. Um, didn't you have an MSC two-step and had a misfire issue with it? Looking to get some form of two-step for the track. I thought I did, but it's not. So I'm, I'm probably going to reinstall it in the um, in the GT500. Uh, thank you, Yankees. Alex, I uh, was doing my AI diss tracks long before Drake even thought of it. Exactly. That Drake stuff is just new. That's new shit. But I love it. I love that they're doing that stuff. Um, remember when Tony Stewart ran someone over? <laughs> did he kill somebody? What if Tony Stewart drove the Tampax car? I only eat Wonder Bread because... <laughs> Oh, Coyote Kelly. I love you. Holy shit. Definitely let off. Yeah, I'd let off. Like, wait, wait, that's those are the rules? I don't think I want to win this race. JJ the boss. Did anything happen with the Cletus soundboard? Uh I don't think I did anything with that. Let me go check. Okay, let, let's let, we'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live, right? We'll do it live. Oh Jesus, we'll do it live. Where's do it live? We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Uh, da, 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 do da, it da, live! Da. I can, I'll write it and we'll uh, do it! Okay, that's enough. Um, wait, Dodge was... Whoa, how did it know this? Wait, did they just update? Test our new multilingual speech-to-speech -speech model. Generate speech. Generate speech. Go. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in? Why didn't anyone let me know? God fucking damn it. Okay, that's that's uh, Shelby's. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in. Why now let's do Dakota. So this is Dakota saying the exact same thing. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in. Why didn't anyone let me know? God fucking damn it. Oh, okay. Um, and this is um, Brian Luna saying that. Let me see. I don't think it's that good. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in? Why didn't anyone let me know? God fucking damn it. It's not that good. Brian Luna is not that good. But Junior is perfect. John Junior's voice is perfect for uh, cloning. Wait, uh, Dodge was pushing people's shit in? Why didn't anyone let me know? God fucking damn it. Oh, it's too fast. It's too fast. But anyway, I don't think I have Cletus in here. Let me see. Uh, Dakota, John, Nardi, Shelby... Trump? No, that's it. No, I don't. I, I never cloned his voice, cause not all voices can be cloned. So you you have to you have to have a voice that's easily clonable. Um, and John Jr.'s voice is is perfect, like perfect for cloning. Can we get JD's voice on there? Uh, JD Swag? I don't think so, cause it has a bit of a uh, an accent. Remember, remember when he's like, "I'm going to send you a sound clip to let you know that I don't have an accent," and he's like. Hello, this is me. I don't have an accent. I'm like, oh my God, stop it. Alex, are all 2650 Edelbrock VMP the same shit? Yeah, bro. The rotor pack, the rotor pack. But the power delivery is going to be the same. It's just a case design. That's all it is. This chat is so influential. I haven't bought a Wonder Bread in so long. Cartman drove the Vagisil car. Being brand loyal is fucking trip, man. People act like these companies run around wearing t-shirts of their cars with their face on it. I just want to sell it. Can we get JD's voice on there? Why Dakota sound like he was getting off saying it? Dakota is interesting. Let me see. 11. I think that's interesting to play with for the end of the show because I think that's fun. Um, uh, let me see. What can I have them say? Uh, uh, I am... Um, 
Let me see. <laughs> it's, everything I type is gay. <laughs> Let's go to voice settings. Um, more stable and, uh, okay, generate speech. Let's see how this goes. I love docking with my uncut boyfriend. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, where is Dakota? Let me see. Because his is, his is really good. I love docking with my uncut boyfriend. No, that's not. That's the wrong Dakota. I think there's got to be another t Dakota that's more. I love docking with my uncut boyfriend. That's Dakota's voice. That's Dakota's voice. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. <laughs> oh. This is this one hits close to home. <laughs> This one cl hits close to home. Dakota said this. I can't wait to tie my cams in wrong for the third time. <laughs> so, yeah, that one's really good. Um, Trump, I, I think I can do Trump. Let me see. Uh, where's Trump? Uh, do I have Trump here? JJ Musk. I got Musk. Trump. Uh, I don't think Trump's is that good. It didn't generate well. I can't wait to time my cams in wrong for the third time. <laughs> it's too fast. And then you got to play with the voice settings. You got to play with variable and high, low stability. Like, it's just too much. Too many I can't wait to time my cams in wrong for the third time. Yeah, his, his voice is not easy to, uh, to clone. Um, yeah. uh, her and... I can't wait to bang Kamala Harris and come in her afro. <laughs> okay, I can't do this shit live because it's it's gonna be wild. So I I'm try I'm trying to be I'm trying to be good about this, but it can it can get out of hand. So uh, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> it's so stupid. Ha, um, AJ said, "How did Steve make the 409 gears work in the S650? They can't tune it." AJ, they didn't. You want to hear? They didn't. It ran slower. It was pissed off. They did not make it work. That's how they made it work. By not making it work. Uh, exactly. I hear Trump pushing people's shit in. You should do Turvey's voice. Cleet is saying, do it live. Uh, I can't translate retard. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. We need... <laughs> Stop it. Uh, yeah, fly shine a flashlight down a hole. What do you see? Oh, I'm like, I see metal. I see... I don't know. What the fuck do you want me to look at? The springs are stuck open. The springs are stuck open, both sides, without the fucking thing in. That do I need a flashlight for that? Fucking stupid. You have a little too much energy today, and uh, uh, the dog is just all up on my shit. Uh, someone said free young thugs. Says Cameron Summers, looking for love in all the wrong places. Uh, yeah, so that's why I can't do that stuff live. So like, all I do is just do just dumb stuff. Like really dumb. What about mocking wheel speed? What about mocking the wheel speed center? Uh, stop, AJ. Stop. It's not tunable. You got an S650? Wait for tuning. Wait for tuning. Modifying a wheel speed sensor. Modifying a wheel speed sensor. He said. Anyway, he wants to modify a wheel speed sensor to make it work. Like, stop. Like, stop. <clears throat> it, the S650 is not tunable. Then you wait for tuning. And if you think that buying it now and waiting for tuning is the right move, you're a stupid son of a bitch. What you do is you wait until it's tunable. Then you buy it. Because all the shit people tried before tuning was available will have gone for nothing. Until a tuned cold air car on E85 beats everything you've done untuned. It's so, such a waste of time to buy an S650. It's garbage. 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 That car's value will go up instantly the moment it's tunable. So you want to say buy it now. It's still high. You're paying a premium because it's new. I'd rather wait for it to be a year or two old. Get my ass into a 2024 in 2026. And be within a tenth or two of people that have cut it up, people that have taken weight out of it, people that are running lightweight brakes, tiny brake company, tiny brake manufacturer brakes, 200 shots. And I'm like, oh yeah, I just tuned it and it went, you know, fucking 9-2.
Stupid. People are stupid. Uh, oh man. Oh. Is it easier to change your gender than to modify a wheel speed sensor? Right. How many, how many pulses do you need? And do you think it's a wheel speed sensor or an output shaft sensor or a rate? Do you know that these cars have a rate that you have to account for? An acceleration rate. It's not just, oh, it's counting the reluctor teeth on the, on, the, on the ring, modify that. No, there's a rate. An acceleration rate. How do you modify that with a, with a tone ring? Stop. Just stop. Just stop. Stop talking. Stop throwing theories out there. Just stop. I don't understand why you guys want to like figure it out. Tuning figures it out. Getting a fucking C file and an A2L. And a guy that is willing to fucking throw his career under the bus by giving people proper files to vet. Above and beyond that, you're stuck with what motherfuckers let you index. That's it. There's no... This, this is, well, you know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a Sawzall. Oh, I'm going to cut this tooth. I didn't do shit. Maybe this tooth. I didn't do shit. Well, at least we like to try something. Fuck that. I'm looking to relocate down to Borm, Texas. Do you think I should reconsider? I would move to Texas. You could pay full expenses. If someone told me tomorrow, Alex, if John Lund Sr. says, Alex, tomorrow you have to move to Texas. Uh, what the fuck is the Dallas area? Dallas Fort Worth area. I will give you a fifty thousand dollar bump, but you got to move there. I will say, no, thank you. Fuck that. Keep my ass in South Florida. When you live here, you'll understand. You under you'll understand. We all want to figure it out. It's not a joke. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. You wait. If you didn't figure it out on Gen 1 Coyote, you're not going to figure it out on Gen 4 Coyote. We couldn't figure out the, the Diddy Beats per minute. You want to try to tune the wheel speed sensors? Brand loyalty is stupid. Everyone has a preference. I get it. But look at what Dodge did. They just started laying off 94% of the U.S. workforce, and they expect people to still be loyal to that. Uh, will there be a gain in A if one installs a 350 head and a Coyote? You'll lose a bunch of torque. By the way, that's another thing. <clears throat> Just because you mod something does not automatically make it better. And I'll give you an example that happened to Ben Calmer, then we'll end the show. Ben Calmer bought a GT350. He's driving it around. He's like, this thing's so awesome. I don't know why I never, you know, looked into these cars before. Fuck my Mach 1. This thing's way better. I go, right? Boom, gets a Lund tune. Oh, dude, this is so fucking sick. It drives so fucking good. Should I get a cold air? I said, nope. Stock cold air. Bet. E85 tune. Dude, this thing rapes. This thing's badass. E85 tune. Oh, my God. Puts long tubes on it. Hey, Alex. Do you think I lost torque by removing the cats and putting long tubes in it? And I'm like, or putting long tubes in it with, you know, high flow cats? I go, yeah, you lost torque. He goes, dude, it feels like shit. So, now you're understanding that a car that already has low torque... You shouldn't free flow the exhaust on it if you want it to feel semi torquey down low. <clears throat> He's like, what do you think I should do? I say you should put a Whipple on it. 10 PSI, twin booster pumps, E85, run, run it out and be happy. He's like, oh, I, I think I want a twin turbo it. And I'm like, oh my God, don't. Oh my God, please don't. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you very much for hanging in there with me. We talked about Gail Banks showing you that hot air actually produces a boost reading in a cubic feet of sealed air. Once they put it on a hot plate, ambient was a certain amount of air density, 180 degrees, same air density, three PSI. Interesting test. Check it out on Instagram. It's a really good um, thought-provoking test that I think really should be taken into account when you start making the correlation between inlet air temps and added boost. More boost, more air, more heat. That's how it has always been since the beginning of time. And the thought process of lowering the compression 
but raising boost to achieve big numbers on pump gas, you still have to mitigate the inlet air temp because now you have to produce more boost to make what it would have made at 12 to 1 or 11 to 1 compression. I'm, trying, I'm closing my eyes, so I'm trying to concentrate the, to what the fuck I'm saying. And then we just kind of devolved into everything. We talked about John Lund Sr. upgrading his turbo size. We talked about moving to Florida. Why moving to Florida is awesome. We talked about people trying to figure out 24 Mustang stuff. Stop. Tuning figures it out. You're not going to figure it out. You're no fucking genius. You have no idea what the logic. We have no idea if Ford changed the logic on this car because we have no roadmap. We just see what the tuning is commanding. We don't see the logic behind it. And if we don't understand what the logic is, we won't know how to work within the logic. The logic is a binary. If yes or no, there's no maybe. So if we have to work within that sandbox, we need tuning to figure it out. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I'll be back on Tuesday for Talking to Tuesday. Have a good rest of your Sunday. I'll see you guys then. See you guys later. Bye.